Welcome to Remember the Great Sports. I am so proud to bring this presentation to you as this is a new series that I'm going to have on my channel. And what I'm going to call this series is AAGPBL Autoography. That's the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League Autoography. And I know I'm saying the word autoography a lot, but I'm trying to talk about autobiography. But we're going to mix it in with the combination of autographs. Now, I thought it necessary to share the very first episode of this series with one of the greatest players to ever play in the AAGPPL, and that is Helen Nicole Nikki Fox from Canada. She was a Rockford Peach. Uh, for the majority of her career, she played for another team in the league as well, and I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Ms. Fox passed away in July of 2021. She was 101 years old when she passed away. Unfortunately, I wasn't on the ball, whatever you want to call it, in trying to reach out to her before she passed away. Um... I wasn't expecting her to sign, you know, an autograph for me at 100 years old. So I simply, when I learned of her passing, I started to look around to find a signed anything of her. There's a few cards out there, but I ultimately landed on this 8x10. And I got this for a real, real affordable price. And so once I got it in the mail, I was like, how am I going to share this? And then the wheels started turning in my head, the creative wheels, whatever you want to call them. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to kick off a new series. I'm not going to post every Thursday like I do through the mail Thursdays. But I'm going to sprinkle in some episodes here and there of autography, AAGBPL style. And just keep your eyes open for them. So with that introduction to the first ever video of this series... We're just going to get right into this, and I'm going to tell you about Helen Nicole Nikki Fox and her career in the AAGPPL and remembering her on this channel with Remember the Great Sports. Helen Nikki Nicole Fox of Scottsdale, Arizona passed away on Sunday, July 25, 2021. Helen was born on May 9, 1920 in Alberta, Canada. Nikki was a pitcher in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League that existed from 1943 to 1954. She played for both the Kenosha Comets and the famous Rockford Peaches. She was one of the league's greatest pitchers, holding several all-time records, including 163 wins as a pitcher and over 1,000 strikeouts with 1,076. Helen Nicole Fox was an Edmonton department store clerk when lured to South to play baseball in what was billed at that time as the Glamour League. The 23-year-old right-hander quickly emerged as a star pitcher in the AAG PBL. She pitched for 10 seasons on the pro circuit based in the American Midwest. Fox thrived in the league even as the rule book evolved from playing softball to baseball with a smaller ball farther pitching distance, and a demanding change over the years in the pitching delivery of the ball itself. She had to be very athletic and very committed to the game, especially to make the transition from underhand to overhand. She had speed and control. She was outstanding. Helen Margaret Nicole was born on May 9, 1920 in Ardley, a hamlet in central Alberta about 185 kilometers north of Calgary. She was the middle child and only daughter born to former Elizabeth May Dunn and Alexander Nicole, who both immigrated to Canada from Scotland in 1910. While attending Connaught School in Calgary, she skated for the Avenue Grills, a hockey team sponsored by a local cafe, leading the Women's City League in goal scoring. She was also a top provincial speed skater, yet it was on the softball diamond where she excelled the most. First recruited at the age of 13 by a senior team, she became Alberta's top softball pitcher before her 20th birthday. She once struck out 23 batters in a 1940 playoff game. She pitched for several teams, notably including the Calgary Chinooks 
and Emmington Army and Navy Pats. In 1942, she won the deciding game of the Western Canadian Championship at Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, while pitching for the Emmington Walk Rights. In 1943, chewing gum magnate P.K. Ridley, owner of the Chicago Cubs, organized a professional softball league for women. About 100 players from across the continent were invited for tryouts at Wrigley Field. Johnny Gotzelig, an NHL player for the Chicago Blackhawks at the time, who in the summer coached softball in Regina, scouted Canadian Prairie Soundlots for likely recruits, and 11 were invited. Helen was one of those 11. It was her first visit ever to the United States. She passed the test and was assigned to the Kenosha Comets with a contract promising a sparse $85 a week to play. The 5'3", 130-pound pitcher was described by the local newspaper, a handsome brunette, dark brown hair, violet blue eyes, and the most charming personality, a refreshing outdoor girl. The circuit was called the Glamour League in part because spring training included evening charm school classes as representatives of the Helena Rubenstein Beauty School taught etiquette to players who were also given instruction in posture, department, and even the application of makeup. She became an immediate fan favorite in the Wisconsin city. I have always enjoyed playing softball more than anything else and dreamed of someday spending an entire summer vacation doing just that, she told the Kenosha Evening News early in her first season. But to be paid for doing it, and to be given such a wonderful trip all the way from Calgary to Kenosha still seems like a page from a fairy tale book. She recorded an impressive 31-8 and win-loss record to help the Comets win the league pennant in the first season. Ms. Fox led the league in several pitching categories, including victories, winning percentage, earned run average, games pitched, innings pitched, and strikeouts. She was chosen the league pitcher of the year. In the league's first all-star game, played under the temporary lights at Wrigley Field, she th hurled three runless innings as Wisconsin defeated the combined Illinois-Indiana all-star team 16-0. She again won Pitcher of the Year honors in her league sophomore season, where she posted a 17-11 record in a miserably .93 earned run average. The rule book changes from underhand to sidearm to overhand ended her brief area of dominance, though she was one of the rare pitchers able to adopt to the changes. Helen retired after 10 seasons split between the Comets and the Rockford Peaches. When the circuit seized operation after the 54th season, she held league pitching records for games, 313, innings pitched, 2,382, as well as strikeouts, 1,076. She was also the career leader in wins and also the career leader in losses. The 13 consecutive victories she recorded in 1943 went unmatched. After she quit, playing baseball, she stayed in Kenosha to work for Motorola and American Motors Company. In 1972, she moved to Arizona where she played in many golf tournaments and won a few. Helen was inducted into the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame as a multi-sport athlete in 1996. Two years later, she was among the 68 Canadian-born veterans of the All-American League enshrined in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Obviously, in 1988, when the AAGBPL was recognized in the Baseball Hall of Fame. So she is in multiple Hall of Fames. So I want to wrap this episode up with saying I hope you enjoy this new concept that I came up with. Uh, I'm going to feature autographs of some of the great AAGBPL players, um, some of them that I have contacted through the mail. I figured I'd start with the best pitcher that ever played in the league. You can make arguments she may not have been the best, but she was one of the best. Uh, she has the all-time winningest, you know, most wins, but she also has the most losses, if you want to look at it that way as well. So I look forward to your comments below. I look forward to you joining me for future episodes. If you haven't already, please check out the links below to some of the AAGBPL videos that I've already done. I look forward to reading your comments really soon.